I welcome you all, my brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Lady Philomena Odibo. I'm a nurse by profession, though retired, but not tired. I am invited by the Workers' Fellowship of St. Andrew's Cathedral, Worry, to give a talk on health tips that will help us in this area of pandemic of the COVID-19. But I want to stress here that what I'm going to discuss today is going to be a long-term strategy, meaning that it will benefit us in the long term. I know we have been having all manner of talks and teachings on health tips, but with COVID-19, there are more things that have come up that we need to learn how to do them and how to use them and make them part of our daily lives. We have all been hearing about what to do, how not to sneeze into the air, how not to cough into the air, but I'm going to re-emphasize them because we need to hear them again and again so that we can adhere to them. We are advised to sneeze into our elbow or cough into our elbow and not to cough or sneeze into the air. The reason is because when you cough or sneeze, you release some droplets of viruses that can be inhaled by another person standing close to you. So because of this problem of this virus, we've been advised to sneeze into our elbow or cough into our elbow. Thereafter, you can sanitize. Two, we can wear the mask so that if we want to sneeze, we can freely sneeze and the mask will trap everything that we release from our nostrils or on our mouth. We have two different types of mask. One is disposable, this, meaning that you can use it and throw it away when it is soaked because it gets soaked easily. It can protect us to a great extent. It's a surgical mask, popularly known in the hospitals, but now everybody is meant to wear one, but it's not readily available. So we have gone as far as developing our own mask with our local fabrics to help us in this era. What I have simply done here is to look for the, the best possible fabric that can help us to filter the air we breathe in and to give us comfort while we wear them. This mask, this is how you wear the mask. It has two slings. You slip one sling over your ear, let the mask cover your nose and your mouth, not only your mouth or only your chin, and not like this, like we see most people do. It should fit on all sides. This is how you take off this mask. and then turn the wrong side out, put the inside in, because this inside has picked all the viruses that have come from other people and the environment to you. They are trapped in here. This right side, the white side, is what has been in close contact with your face. So when you sneeze into it and cough into it, it is assumed that you have contaminated it. And so when you take it out by releasing one sling and the other, you turn it out without touching the outside because that's what has come from other people and the environment. You just turn it inside out. You must have a bucket to wash them. Drop it in the bucket with your soapy water, hot soapy water. You wash, you iron, dry it in the sun if there's sun and then iron it because heat will help to kill the viruses in it, especially the COVID-19. Two, we have been asked to wash our hands. We wash our hands regularly before, but this time that we are emphasizing it. It's not just to wash ordinarily like this, it's to wash it properly. Look at my palms. They are not as flat as a sheet. These are my fingers, and there are gaps in between the fingers. 
In the middle of the palm, if you put your hand straight down, you see that it's a bit deep while this place is bulging out. So this is like the heel of your palm. This is like the seat of your palm. So if you go washing your hands just like this, you will fail to touch these areas. So what the best way to do is wet your hands, put your soap, and then rub both hands against each other briskly, fast, to create friction. Use one hand, wash the back of the other in between the fingers. Paying attention, especially to this thumb because it's quite far. If you do this, you are really not touching here. So pay attention to the thumb, between the thumb and the index finger. The same thing, use the fingers of one hand to scrub the seat of your palm very well. The fingers of the other hand to scrub the seat of your palm. You can even go as far as using the fingers of one hand to scrub the fingers of the other hand and do likewise and then rinse your hand under running water. By the time you are through with this, you would have taken about 20 seconds. And we all know that hand washing will wash off surface bacteria and viruses. Three, we have been asked to keep the physical distance. I will tell you why all of this is in this sequence. You won't sneeze into the air. This will prevent, the mask will prevent you from sneezing into the air. That's one. The distance will prevent what comes out of you to be inhaled by the person in front of you. That's why they say we should keep six feet, two meters, because the virus is not light enough to be carried far by air, but it can go as much as near this two meter distance. Because it is not able to be carried by air like other viruses that we have had over time, when you sneeze out, the person very close to you that is less than two meters to you can breathe it in. So if you are not wearing your mask, you will, de you will distribute to the person standing in front of you or beside you. If the person in front of you is wearing a mask, the person is protected. Then these viruses can now fall on your surroundings, on your clothing, your table, even on your hand, your rings, your wristwatch, and so on and so forth. And then from this place, another person can come touch the surface that is contaminated and so on, carry this virus from one place to the other. So we, that's why we, they talked about wearing gloves. While you're at home, you may not need your gloves. While you are in the public places, like markets, public transport, burials, where you have large crowd, your gloves are important because you will touch surfaces. These are just clean surgical gloves. They are also disposable. You cannot reuse them. They are very light. So what you do, you must wear the pair of gloves at any given time if you are going to wear your glove. If I have to go to the market, for example, I will wear my gloves. Or I'm going to the supermarket, I will wear my gloves. If I choose to go to a crowded place, any crowded place, I will wear my gloves. When I am done, when I get out of that place back home, this is how I take it. This is the surface that have touched every other area that most may have collected uh, microorganisms. I will take them off like this and I will dispose. We must all have paper bags in our small dustbin. Dispose tight and we throw away. This COVID-19 is not going to go away so soon or may not go away so soon. If we take a look back at where we're coming from, we have the flu virus that has been there even before some of us were born. It's still there. We have had the Ebola. Ebola is gone by the grace of God. We have Lassa fever that comes on and off. Even in the early days of this shutdown in March, we still had cases in the country of Lassa fever. And now the COVID-19. So all what we are learning today is going to help us live a normal life in spite of COVID-19 or any of the viruses. So we're going to talk about cleaning. Normally we clean our homes, we sweep, we damp doors, we are going to intensify it. We are not just going to damp dust. On top of surfaces, tables, handles, where we touch every day, 
people come in and out and handle them, we should, we should wipe them with warm soapy water first and then we disinfect. The floors are the most dirty parts of any home, of any place, because everybody comes and step on the floor. And the commonest disinfectant we have in this our area is the hypoergic bleach. It is very corrosive. It releases fumes. So when you want to use this bleach, you must be very careful not to allow it to touch your skin. If you can't afford it, wear your gloves before you open and dispense your bleach. What we will do, we, I will just teach the simplest way we can use bleach. If I decide to use one cup of this bottle of bleach, I will add it to nine parts of water, meaning this container of water nine times plus one of bleach. That's one in ten. And that can help you mop your floor. That concentration is strong enough to get rid of the virus on the floor. If I want to clean tabletops, door handles, and so on and so forth, there are some materials with which we have made our doors, our handles, that cannot tolerate a strong concentration like the floor. But it's also good enough to get rid of the virus. So, I will take two tablespoons, tablespoon like the one you use in eating, of bleach, and add two and a half beer bottle. You know the beer bottle is, you know the size of beer bottle, two and a half of beer bottle of water to two tablespoons of bleach. That is strong enough to clean surfaces that bleach can damage. So you can use them for your door handle, you can use them for your tabletop, you can use them for your shelves, your counter in the kitchen. You can use them for your sink. You can use them for your sealed cans. We buy canned food here and there from the shops. If you look at some of them, some you see some brownish sediments caked on top of these things. These are from all manner of things that have fallen on them. So with this COVID-19, we can use that dilution, two tablespoons of bleach to two and a half beer bottle of water. Wash this can very well with this solution. Leave it for about one minute before you wipe it dry. But note, you cannot use it on a sealed can that has shown signs of rust. Once rust starts appearing, it means that the strength of the can is already wearing off. If the can is bulging, one part is swollen, it means that the strength of that can is already wearing off. So we don't want to put anything that is corrosive on it. You cannot use it on that kind of can. Neither can you use it on any food that you cannot wash before eating. Like, you can't use it for your vegetables, you can't use it for your carrots. It's just on tins, tin, tin, like salad tin, big beans tin, tin tomatoes, that is still intact so that it will not get inside because we you cannot afford to ingest this is poisonous then when we look at our bathrooms we clean them we mop them maybe once a week we need to mop regularly this time and the solution is the one of bleach to nine of water so if you know your floor is big and you want to use three of this of bleach, then you will put water, the water will be nine of this times three. Just increase the way you want, the space you have. But know that this solution cannot last you more than 24 hours. And two, don't dilute the bleach and put it in another bottle. Look at this bottle, you can see the inside. It is deliberately made like this to protect the bleach because sunlight cannot penetrate this. And once you mix it, within 24 hours, use it and throw it away. So we have to also disinfect our toilets, the drains, because we have also heard that this virus is found in the sewage. Because at a stage of this infection of COVID-19, diarrhea becomes a problem. So once you start stooling, once it triggers diarrhea, then that virus will be released in stool. 
And so we must disinfect our drainages through our bathroom and our toilet bowls, the drainage in your shower or your bath, the wash hand basin, by pouring some amount of bleach. And then add plenty of water, follow it with plenty of water, because bleach can mix with anything to release numerous types of gases. That's why I said it releases fumes. And when you want to do that, make sure that all the windows are open so that fresh air can come in and take away the fumes from this bleach. As for our vegetables, our fruits, we can wash them with salt and water before eating or before cooking. Sometimes we buy packs of food that are sealed from the shops. They are sealed with tough cellophanes. With this same solution of two tablespoons of bleach to two and a half bottles of beer, you can easily rinse that pack. Leave it for one minute, leave the wetness for one minute before you clean it dry. Then take out that cellophane and then take out your fruit. Rinse them with salt and water and keep for your consumption. COVID-19 has taken us like into the dark age because everything seemed to be shrouded with mysteries that we don't know. We don't know when it will stop. We don't know how it is going to stop. But as children of God, we are praying and expecting that one day God will take it away. Before this comes, we must imbibe this habit because it is pertinent for us to obey little instructions for our own good. So once you get used to all these practices, it is hard for you to stop them. You find out that without them you cannot function. And you find out that because you know them, because you practice them, you want to tell everybody around you, you know, that you perceive is not doing the right thing. And that's what it should be. Some of us have aged parents that even before COVID-19 are not mobile like before, they don't come out. It is, this is a time for us to look after them visit them from time to time make sure that these little cleanings are done for them do their shopping for them if we look around us what is happening around us is not good because people are not complying people believe that there's nothing like covid 19 that is a scam even as at that protect yourself wear your mask cough into your elbow sneeze into your elbow Sanitize, wash your hands regularly. If you can't aff afford the sanitizer, just keep washing your hands. Look at my hands. I have practiced nothing for many years. My hands are still the same. We wash and wash and wash. It will keep you healthy. It will keep your family healthy. We all know what is happening. Once you are COVID-19 positive, they are taking you to a center. God forbids it. If you don't make it, your family cannot retrieve your body. Your family cannot bury you. Your family cannot visit you. So let this be at the back of our mind. And let us keep trusting. Because I believe that there is a ray of light in this dark tunnel of COVID-19. That one day, it will go away. Having said all of this, there's an adage I learned when I was very small in school. They say education goes wherever you go. Thief cannot steal it. Fire cannot burn education. This little education we have received today, let us hold on to it even after COVID-19 goes because it's going to help us to live a better life. Thank you.